So welcome ladies to another week in your feminine power masterclass live event. I'm super excited to be here. There's, um, you know, this is really, this is a really fun organic container that I host primarily because in the collective, there's so many people in general, not just females, but people, just men and women, um, really waking up to embodying more feminine energy. Um, this is something that's happening uh, collectively. And if you're hearing the call to this message, then you're definitely on that path to opening up to more of embodying your feminine essence. And when I say feminine and masculine, it's very key to, we're going to dive into this. I'm not speaking to gender. So this class is this, this container, this masterclass, this event, whatever you want to call it, is not speaking to gender. This is not feminism. This is not, um, uh, is pointing to something feminine and masculine labels are pointing to something much deeper and um, it's pointing to energy it's pointing to a dualistic nature that really is the fabric of our existence and so when you're able to understand this polarity not only within the world around us the 3d reality that we exist in but also the inner our inner world you're able to come into harmony and balance and live more in the flow. And this is what really helps you break the toxic cycles of hustle and burnout and overwhelm and really embodying and rec recognizing what that feminine essence truly is um, on an energetic level. Um, so we're going to talk about this because uh, we're going to dive deeper into this, but that's the reason I hold this container. It's really fun to bring powerful women together that are on this path and open up a dialogue that allows us to explore the, these concepts on a deeper level and speak to, you know, ways to start to integrate them and, and embody them so that we can live a more um, aligned lifestyle. And when I say aligned, I mean alignment with what, right? Alignment with our true essence, alignment with who we truly are, which is not this physical body, not this mind, not this character that we're playing, but truly in alignment with our, 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 our expression our, of who we truly are. Um, so when we say divine femme embodiment, this will become more clear as we move through this training, but I just wanted to give a little, you know, intro as to why we're holding this. Um, and again, what, if you're new to my world, uh, welcome. My name is Sarah. I'm a feminine embodiment coach, and I also help female spiritual entrepreneurs launch their businesses online. And so prior to this, though, I just wanted to give a little background on how I got here. So prior to this, uh, my life was in real estate, and uh, I've been a sale in sales and entrepreneurship my whole life. Um, and before I dive deeper into my story, I just wanted to um, get a handle on where everybody, I know a lot of you said that you were very new to this topic, and some are... Um, some are more experienced. Uh, one last housekeeping thing before I forget. I wanted to say if you if your first name is not um, if your first name is not what you registered with, like your Zoom name is something different, or it's going to be hard to figure out who you are because you registered under a different name. Please put your full um, name in the chat box, first and last name, and for example. SB68499. Can you put your name in the chat box so I can have, uh, I'd like to connect with you guys afterwards and send you some things. Oh, there it is. And I want to make sure I'm sending it to the people that actually attended. Sorry about that. That's just a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, same with um, anybody else on here whose name is not matching up with how they registered. If you could please put your first and last name. Sounds looks like some of them are business names and stuff like that. Feel free to please drop that in the chat box. Or if you're missing a last name, um, please put your last name in the chat box. Okay. Okay, perfect. So why am I here? Why am I holding this? Where, how did I get here to be sharing this um, to begin with? When I Maybe you'll be able to resonate with this. Maybe you won't. But let's see. But my experience is I come from a real estate and sales and entrepreneurship background. And um, prior to what I would refer to as my awakening, spiritual awakening, which was just a process of becoming more consciously aware and things like that, I was very much stuck in the hustle and the burnout and the overwhelm. And so I was constantly hustling in real estate, always burned out, 
um, going, going, going until I was exhausted, um, chasing that proverbial carrot outside of myself, um, whether that be more clients, more money, more success, a better car, better house, you know, all of those things, feeling really guilty when I took time off to the point where I was just like a workhorse. And there was just like this, yeah, level of this inner feeling of guilt to actually take care of me. Um, there were zero healthy boundaries around my time or my energy. And that was with clients. That was with relationships. I was constantly over giving to others, bleeding my own energy dry, literally just like completely zapping my energy. So my relationships were not in a healthy dynamic. My client, you know, my work was not in a healthy dynamic. Um, I would often numb out to wine or Netflix binges and things like that to sort of escape. That's an ego tendency. That's a um, pretty common tendency. Um, as so I, was work, I was a workaholic, always on the go, um, always putting myself last, taking this was a total lack of self-care. Um, so when we talk about divine feminine embodiment, this was a phase of my life where I was exactly the opposite of everything that and depicts this um, quote unquote divine feminine embodiment. Um, on top of that, I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. I didn't trust other people that much. So I always had to do everything myself. I had, which, which was just a way for me to be a control freak. So I didn't trust my assistants. I didn't trust that my partner could do something, you know, like I had to micromanage and control everything. So it was hard for me to let go. It was hard for me to outsource. It was hard for me to, um, you know, manage my time ac accordingly, because if it needed to get done and I wanted it needed to be done right, then I needed to do it. Right. And so I had to take on all the hat, wear all the hats and do all the things all the time. That was just another sneaky way that I was uh, afraid. And so I couldn't trust other people because it was a reflection of not being able to even trust myself, really, because our outer world really is a reflection. Um, and so control, uh, control issues were a thing. Uh, as you could probably tell, this was a pretty stressful time then, right? So not a lot of self, no self-care, workaholic. Um, things from the outside were looking like they could be, you know, were looking like they measured up to everybody else, right? So I was able to keep a healthy front, uh, quote unquote, happy face on. Uh, I was able to drive a decent car. I was able to have nice clothes. I always got my nails done. I always had to look perfect. I was constantly beating myself up, counting calories, going to the gym. Like perfectionism was another, another thing that I was um, really uh, struggling with because everything had to be perfect. Um, if it wasn't, it was a direct reflection of my... It, it was an it was a worthiness issue, right? So everything outside of me had to be a certain way in order for me to get that external validation that I was seeking, because I wasn't getting the validation from within. Um, so from the outside looking in, it looked like I might have had my shit together, right? But there were still people that would come up to me and say, smile, right? So even though I thought I was keeping it all together, there was still this energy that people were constantly telling me to smile because I was not um, really happy from the inside out. I was just putting on a happy face and there's a difference. You can tell when someone's glowing and when someone is um, trying to muster up the energy to put up a front and wear a mask. And that's where I was. Um, so this obviously led to a lot of stress. And um, there is like some noise going on in the background. Let me go ahead and see if I can put my AirPods in. There was a lot of stress and, and um, lots of, um, you know, I think, can you guys still hear me okay? Now that I put these on? Okay. Okay, good. I just wanna make sure. Okay, so, okay. Um, where was I? So there's a lot of stress issues. There was a lot of uh, leaky gut syndrome, IBS, hormone imbalances, weight gain, uh, food allergies. My gut health was shot. My immunity was then shot. So at some point I was just getting flu after flu after flu in the middle of the summer. Like I was, I was just like, it, I, I mean, it was just any time of year. I was getting the flu. I remember multiple times, but I was still out there showing houses opening doors and shaking hands and selling houses, right? Because I didn't even honor myself enough to heal from being sick until I eventually burned out and um, got pneumonia because my immune system was so low um, that I was having trouble breathing and I had to go to the emergency room because I, I had walking pneumonia because my lungs were filling up with fluid. Um, and this is because 
yeah, it shot my immune system. And so at one point, I, my, my solution was I wanted to sell everything and I wanted to just move to Costa Rica, sell my house, sell all my things um, and just go do yoga on the beach and escape. And escapism is another, another, you know, sneaky ego trick. And that's almost, you know, that's something that I was seriously considering. And I felt like, oh, freedom, I'm going to be able to just escape this mess and just leave. But, um, you know, probably the only thing that kept me from not moving to Costa Rica was probably my dogs, to be honest, because I couldn't figure out how to get them anywhere comfortably. <laughs> and so they kept me grounded and, and staying put. Um, but that was just another form of escapism. And I didn't take that route. Um, what I did do was I started at, so at this point, I just craved ease and freedom and a healthy relationship and just feeling good in my body. Everything was so stressful work and on my health. And on top of that, I was in an, a relationship that I, uh, someone I was engaged to that was not working out engaged for almost two years, never planned a thing until I realized that the ring on my finger simply was a symbol that meant somebody out there loved me, um, some kind of validation, but it didn't even matter who. And I, when I realized I was using that also as a form of some form of external validation, I could tell it was out of alignment and I broke off the engagement. So this is where I went into like my first phase of really starting to take my power back and come into a deeper sense of self-worth. And um, so what I did do is I broke off my engagement and I did I did end up traveling. I started to travel to all these places, but I didn't move. I didn't try to escape. I went quote unquote soul searching, right? Um, solo traveling around the world. Um, and I dove into holistic healing and nutrition and energy work, energy healing. I got certified in yoga and all these things. Uh, and I started to see results, right? Because we tend to attack things on the physical level when things are going awry, because that's where we can see the quickest result. That's where we can see a tangible result. So a lot of times, um, not everybody starts on the physical level, but that's what it was for me. I started to really, um, you know, cleaned up my diet, went organic, not GMO, was vegan for a year, blah, 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 all of those things. Right. And I started to heal my gut naturally. Everything healed up, you know, slowly started to heal up. Um, and and so that brought me to a certain level of success. But even though I was now healthier and happier, I was still seeing a revolving door of men that reflected back to me, um, not what I truly valued. So I wasn't truly being valued or honored. There was lots of abandonment. There was lots of things being triggered. Um, there was lots of uh, no, you know, commitment issues and lack of intimacy and all of these things, which were a direct reflection of how armored up I was around my feminine heart and my inner essence and how unsafe I felt because the feminine essence in us desires to feel safe. And so, um, so this led me to getting these margin, getting these results, but then still being guided to go deeper. And this is when I started to you know, really explore energy and stumbled into feminine and masculine energy and recognizing that once we're able to really harness, uh, like really harness is the wrong word, but um, tap into this natural flow, this natural rhythm of energy that literally exists in all things in the world itself. It's the nature and fabric of, of this dualistic nature that we're experiencing, but it's also this you know, within ourselves as well, because we are part of the whole, we are, uh, we are the whole, we are all connected, right? And so I don't want to pass my beliefs off to anybody, but I truly believe we all are source or oneness or all that is or infinite intelligence or whatever. But in order to experience ourselves and in order to have, uh, you know, this 3D experience, there had to be an opposite in order for it to experience itself. And so this is the birth of duality. Uh, and this is really what the feminine and masculine energy is pointing to. It's pointing to this dualistic nature um, uh, that has uh, that as you explore this and you come into more alignment with this has the ability to completely alchemize, transform your entire 3D physical experience. And that's ultimately because of the energetic alignment that's happening from within. So 
Luckily, none of that happened. I didn't escape because you can't really escape yourself. Even if I would have moved to Costa Rica or this or that, like I would have been taking myself with me. Um, and so escapism, avoidance, um, you know, all of those things, that's just a sneaky way for the ego to keep you stuck. And so, and so this is where I was at and this is what's brought me here today. And so does any of that, I just like to check in with you guys. Does any of that actually resonate with you? Does any bit of that story um, resonate with your experience or where you're at or what brought you here. On top of that, I'd also like to say, I, I started to put a mask on, like, as I started to become more empowered, what I did was I adopted this empower, you know, boss babe mentality, and I can do everything myself again. And it turned into this like misindependent persona, which was a mask that I wore, which just was another sneaky way for me to like control and not be vulnerable. And so that mask, was I, I, I was really priding myself on, do, on, on, on being, I gave, it was like a badge of honor to be able to do everything myself and be this big boss babe. And then when I got onto the spiritual path, I, I swapped that out for another mask. And this is really important to understand on the quote unquote spiritual journey where everything's supposed to be love and light and rainbows and butterflies all the time, because if, you know, you know, if you're not, then you're not going to manifest what you want and this and that. And there's just constant striving and constant seeking and constant needing to be better and constant wanting to manifest things, which was really just an indicator that I was still not really okay with what is because there was still something lacking outside of me that I needed to manifest in the future in order to quote unquote, be okay or feel better. So that spiritual mask that I then adopted was just another mask to keep me seeking outside myself in so many ways. And it wasn't until I started to really go inward and connect with my true, you know, and connect with my true essence and my fem, my, uh, the, the energy that creates worlds, the one, you know, the feminine and masculine energy, um, that I was able to come into more harmony. So is this making sense at all? I know um, I'm just getting started, but I just wanted to know if any of this resonates with any of you, how you're feeling about this, if this is something um, that you can relate to. Yes, all of it. Yes, absolutely. I see some hearts. Wine and vacations has been my life. <laughs> yeah. Wine and vacations, yes, um, yes. Everything we think, everything, everything thinks I'm not totally get it. hundred percent. Okay, perfect. So it looks like a lot of us, this is not an accident that everybody, you know, that we're, we're holding this space together. And so I wanted to dive deeper into the feminine and masculine energy as it points to this deeper, you know, yin yang energy that flows through nature and ourselves and connects us to all. Th it's, it's really hard to talk about to not get sidetracked here. So we're just going to dive into, because I know there's a lot of people that are brand new to this topic. We're going to start at the very beginning with just some simple concepts. Think of the feminine polarity, the feminine essence as the subtle realm, as the, 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 the energy um, presence beingness, the aspect that we can't see. So it, it exists in the subtle realm. And so it's experienced by going within where the masculine energy is externalized and is represents the physical realm. And that's what you can see, taste, touch, and feel, all right? There's both and there's both, right? They, they're the yin and the yang, the front and the back, the, you know, uh, they're two sides of the same coin and they go together. Um, you are an energetic being, but yet you're having this 3D physical touch it, taste it, you know, see it physical experience, but you're not just this 3D person that you know yourself to be. You're not just this physical avatar that your character that you're playing right now, you're something deeper, which is why you're resonating. If you've been drawn to this masterclass, there's a deeper, um, there's a deeper aspect to this. That's, and when I say deeper, that, that implies direction. And so I'm just using words that are really based in duality, um, but uh, there's the beingness, the energy that is also part of this experience and they go hand in hand. So feminine expresses in the subtle realm representing by going within, right? It's the, the part you can't see, taste and touch in the physical world is externalized and that is the masculine side. Um, just as a loose way to, to understand this. And because we live in a society 
um, whether it's, you know, society, media, corporate culture, work culture, just in general, what we, because the physical world is the most visible, um, obviously, it's something that we can see, taste, and touch. It's also how we can stack ourselves up against each other and compare to try to discern how good we're doing and how valuable we are, how worthy we are, right? So whether it's the media, the magazines, the, you know, corporate culture, society in general, um, what we're we're a bunch of energetic spiritual beings running around in this 3D physical world using 3D physical things to see how we stack up. This is the chasing of that proverbial carrot. Oh, now I'm good enough. Now I've now I'm worthy enough, right? Now I have the right clothes. Now I have the right car. Now I have the relationship. Now I have the money. Now I have the house or blah blah blah. All the things, anything that you could be using as a form of external validation we live in this um, 3D world, right? We're existing in this 3D experience. And so that's the easiest for us to access and therefore use as a gauge or a barometer on how good we're doing and how worthy we are. When ultimately none of that is an indicator of your innate divine worth because you're, you are an expression of all that is, right? At least this is again, I don't want to project my belief systems or opinions or perceptions or whatever you want to call it, but I really can't do that without, without, I can't hold this class without sharing it a little, right? So either resonate, if it resonates, keep it. If it doesn't resonate, let it go. But if we're connected to all things and, and, and everything is all an expression of this oneness, of source energy, of God, of unconditional love, of, of the essence of all that is, then you are too, you are included in that. And so is everything else. And so is everyone else. And when you discount that, you're discounting your true nature of who you truly are. And the ego loves to do that. The ego loves to do it in sneaky ways, right? So for a long time, it was like pumped up confidence. Like I, you know, if you think you're better than other people, that's, that's an ego tendency. But also if you think you're less than, than other people, that's also an ego tendency, right? That's two sides of the same stick is evaluating and judging and comparison um, based on this 3D reality um, that we're seeing, which is the externalized, which is what our society and culture is based on, which is why we live in a very highly dominant um, masculine culture um, that is used to comparing and validating through external means. But that is shifting. There is a paradigm shift happening where we are guided to connect to this quote unquote feminine energy, which is the essence of who we truly are. It's the flow, it's the energy, it's the part you can't see. It's the part that makes up and creates all that is. It's both, right? The, the, the 3D reality and the unseen reality. Um, the seen and the unseen go together. You can't have one without the other. The seen represented by the masculine and the unseen represented by the feminine. This is the nature of reality. They go together and they're intertwined in everything when you see this in nature. Um, and it's part of our own existence as well. And so we have these energies uh, that we can tap into to start to harmonize from the inside out. And when that occurs, you can actually become magnetic do the other things that are, um, when we talk about activating your feminine magnetism, which we may get to in this or we may not, but um, just like a magnet that has a positive and a negative polarity, they can attract or they could repel. And so when you are in flow, you become magnetic to the other things. And this is when, you know, you, if you've ever experienced this and you probably have, where you're just in the flow and things are just working out and things are, you know, um, happening with the least amount of efforting, um, or you could be really struggling through something and trying to force and trying to control. And you may still get marginal results, but at your own expense. And this is where the burnout and the overwhelm and stuff can come in. So if you look at nature as an example, nature is a great example of feminine energy and nature gets everything happens in nature um, and it's in the flow and it's and everything, everybody, everything's getting done, but there's no force. There's no struggle happening. And so 
So this was just a breakthrough into the feminine essence and masculine and feminine, feminine essence and polarity that exists. And when we talk about how it exists inside of us or outside of us, this will make more sense as I go into some of the characteristics of feminine and masculine energy as a, as a, as a, as a, as a quality, I guess you could say for lack of a better word. So if the feminine polarity represents a subtle realm that is inward, that is our beingness, or it's the subtle realm we can't see and it's going within, this is gonna be, you know, largely indicated by your intuition, right? So feminine energy is very intuitive. It's very creative, right? That creative spark of insight that you get very, you know, so intuition, intuition, um, creating, nurturing, um, that, uh, very tapped into your senses, uh, empathic. I think I might've said that very receiving, um, allowing, flowing, beingness, um, vulnerable, open, uh, very empowered from the inside out, very fluid, right? So it's, it's the opposite of the masculine energy, which is going to provide more structure, which is, you know, part of our 3D world, right? The structure, the stability, the being powerful, but from an external standpoint, powerful. Um, it's very action oriented where the in feminine essence is very much in her is very much receiving. So, so feminine compared to masculine, masculine is going to be more assertive, right? You're it's externalized. It's assertive. It's um, action oriented, results driven, um, protective in a, in a strong way, right? The, the masculine energy is the energy that sets those healthy boundaries, right? That's the masculine energy is what draws the line in the sand. And so when we talk about feminine energy being imbalanced, that's also going to go tandem with masculine energy that's imbalanced. And so we'll talk about that, what that looks like. But the masculine energy is giving, feminine is receiving, masculine is powerful, feminine is empowered from within, masculine is analytical, logical, in the mind, feminine is in the heart space, intuitive, embodied, um, receiving. Uh, masculine is obviously externalized, uh, represents the physical realm, like I spoke about, stable and resilient. When it's in its sacred form, when it's in its aligned form, because there's like a shadow, there's a quote unquote wounded side of the feminine energy and there's a quote unquote misaligned or wounded side of the masculine energy. And that could look like this. Um, if the feminine energy, the feminine energy is also very much tapped into your value system and your intuition, your living in the present moment, um, very clear on values and her divine nature, her, you know, worth. And I'm using the word her just because I'm talking to females. This is not gender specific, as I said before, trust her intuition and lives in harmony with the flow of nature cycles, even right. The cycles of the universe cycles of the moon cycles that exist. Right. And so it's very fluid and in the flow. And so let's say that feminine is not in line, the feminine energy is um, not in alignment with values, doesn't under, isn't clear on values. Then the ma the masculine energy is not able to actually hold those boundaries and set healthy boundaries. And um, what happens is, is that the masculine will overcompensate and go into overdrive to protect the feminine essence of you if the feminine essence of you doesn't feel safe, secure, and things like that, and open and vulnerable, the masculine will go out and oftentimes go into overdrive with overcompensating energy, which can lead to overdoing, overgiving instead of just giving, overdoing instead of just doing. Um, and can also look like instead of drawing just a healthy boundary, it can look like what it looked like for me, which was like a complete wall around my heart, overprotection mode. Right. And this was all because the feminine was not resting in the essence of 
my feminine was not resting in the essence of who I truly was, which was a, is a divine worthy being that is vulnerable, that it's can be vulnerable and open to receive. There were so many blocks around me feeling safe, open to receive, vulnerable, trusting, trusting my intuition. I would have my intuition and instead of trusted, I would do the opposite um, or something. I wouldn't honor it. And so what happens is you get stuck in this toxic loop where if the feminine is not in alignment, then the masculine is going to be taking action for the sake of taking action, or it's going to be taking over action. And this is where the overgiving um, or the lack of boundaries or too rigid of boundaries, right? Because the masculine is all about structure, rigid um, foundations, stability, protection, giving and all of these things. And there's a healthy way to have all of those things. And you have to have all of those things if you want to be in alignment, right? So if you see a woman walk into a room and she owns her worth and she just knows who she is and she's just fully, you know, true confidence, not fake falsified confidence to try to boost her ego, but just fully feeling good in her own skin and knowing what she's worth. She has no problem saying no when she means no. She's not a yes woman. She has no problem drawing a healthy boundary. She has no problem walking away from something that is not serving her because it doesn't align with her values. She is, there is no problem with letting something go that is not fully nurturing her. And there is no way that she would allow something to step in, uh, something to come in that puts her last and where she's always in a place of overgiving and self-sacrificing and seeking that validation outside of herself. And so when you see a powerful woman walk into the room that it just really owns her essence she also has a really strong masculine. They go hand in hand. Again, they're tandem. They're, the, they're two sides of the same coin. They're the inner and outer version of alignment. But when one's out of alignment, the other one will also be out of alignment because they also go hand in hand and they'll be, the masculine will be, instead of assertive, it will be aggressive. And, you know, um, instead of uh, being giving, it'll be overgiving. So there's a shadow side, quote unquote, shadow side to both of these qualities that you can get stuck in if you're, and then the cycle just repeats and then just repeats. And then there's a revolving door, a mirror reflecting back to us in the form of life circumstances that um, reflect back to us what we need to see. And that could be a relationship that could be taken advantage of at work. And, always, you know, like it could be like all of these different scenarios where in your entire life, right? It, it falls into all areas. Um, so everything becomes a mirror for you to be able to look at in order to uh, come into more alignment, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I just shared a little bit about the feminine and masculine polarity and how it is not related to gender whatsoever. Men and women um, have inner feminine and masculine energy. And I know a lot of men that are waking up to their feminine side. That means they're, they're becoming more empathic. They're tapping into their heart space more. They're listening more to their heart instead of their mind. They're tapping into a, understanding the depths of their emotions instead of always suppressing and ignoring or avoiding. And they are rising to the occasion to be a healthy giver and a healthy protector and a healthy version of that masculine energy, but also open to receive on the, side, on the other side. And so, again, not gender specific. This is the energy that we all have access to masculine and feminine energy within us. And so when we talk about, you know, stepping into your feminine power, like this is why I said at the very beginning, this is not you know, feminine, feminism, or like, I'm woman, hear me roar. And this is like all about female uh, empower, you know, like gender specific kind of um, mask that we could choose to wear. This is about finally deciding to jump off the hamster wheel instead of putting another mask on. This is about taking off the mask or recognizing at least that you're playing with a mask. And so that you can go a level deeper behind what is being personified and tap into something that will truly come in, bring you into alignment from the inside out. And then instead of repelling what it is you actually want, you magnetize it into you just based on the laws of nature, just based on, yeah, just based on the laws of nature. So if, if feminine, you can think feminine represents like the laws of nature and the subtle realm, the creative flow, you know, the things, you know, the ebbs and the flows and the rhythms and the cycles that exist 
in the unseen world that are happening all around us all the time. This, this would be a good, you know, nature itself, mother earth itself is a great example of the feminine, feminine essence where the masculine would, would be more externalized world, man-made laws, things that bring our 3D, that make, that bring structure and stability into our 3D world, right? So you could think of building, the masculine essence of a building would be the foundation of the building and the walls of the building and the beams of the building and the things that bring it structure and stability and foundation. Whereas the empty space that creates the rooms would be the feminine essence, right? And, and so it exists everywhere. It exists in this cup, in my coffee cup, the externalized piece of this component of this cup is the is the essence is the masculine essence it's the it's the externalized form just like you have an externalized form but you are not this externalized form solely you are not this solely the externalized form the cup also has empty space that actually brings it value because but everybody just looks at the cup right and thinks this is a cup what a the space that brings it value inside the cup is what actually makes it useful and they go hand in hand. And so it's two sides of the same coin. You can't have a cup without the space in the center, without the S without the emptiness even. And so when we look into the world and see just 3d and just three, just see structure and just see tangible things and we then use those tangible things as a way to externalize our, uh, seek validation outside of ourselves. And we don't take the time to actually go in and explore our inner world and come into alignment with who we truly are. What we end up doing is running around this world, bumping into other people that are simply going to reflect back our lack of our true, uh, uh, reflect back to us in some way, shape or form the um, the lack that we still feel from within because we've been externalizing our worth this entire time and it can be realized on our deathbed that oh we've had it all wrong this whole time chasing something outside of ourselves to find happiness chasing something outside of ourselves in the form of a relationship of money or a car or success or something like that in order to fully come into alignment or wholeness or whatever it is you want a word you want to put on it freedom um peace but in actuality it's already here within us we've just been, been pretending that we don't see it we've been pretending we're a person or an avatar character running around this world failing to see that we are so much more than just the physical being and so tapping into the feminine essence is about going beyond the 3d and tapping into tapping into our intuition our presence, our beingness, allowing aligned decisions, aligned choices will naturally arise from that place, which then the masculine can take action on to go do something in the 3D world because masculine energy is not bad. It's just been imbalanced. When we naturally allow our true essence, our authentic expression to rise up within us and we create space for that and we heal what is kept us from blocking it or being open to receive and being vulnerable and all these things. And we allow just our true expression to start to rise up and our intuition and our creative, our creative insights and things like that. We will know the next right step to take. And the masculine then can go out and take that action. But here's the kicker. The masculine energy is also the courageous energy, right? So the, you know, the, the feminine is very tapped into her senses. The masculine is very tapped into that courageous, strong, powerful energy. And so when you're about to break the mold or break a cycle, especially right now, you know, if you're feeling the energies of the eclipse and things like that, and it's a, and you know that there's a period or a phase right now of letting go, when or allowing things that are not in alignment to fall away, is when you want when your intention is to come to alignment when your soul is ready for that then what that means is everything that's not in alignment has to go and that's not always a comfortable place to be if you're attached to the external form of anything that needs that is not in alignment then it's going to cause um it's going to require courage to take that next step draw that boundary make that draw that line in the sand or take that action or don't take that, whatever the action, it's either inaction or action, but it's the masculine energy that's going to 
require courage in order to do that. And oftentimes when faced with that choice point, if the courage and the faith is then not there and you're not deeply rooted in your feminine essence, which truly trusts her intuition and knows in her heart of hearts that she's worth everything that, she, you know, there's, there's just divine innate worthiness. There is no need for settling or compromising or putting yourself last or anything like that. Those are, that's a lack scarcity place to be. Right. And when you fully, fully, truly know that, then the masculine can take courageous action, even if it's painful, even if it hurts, even if it, in, you know, there's a sense of loss or there's a sense of, you know, grieving or anything like that, that occurs as you let something go that is not meant to be in your experience, at least at this point, you'll already know what that is. And I know like that that's coming up for a lot of people because of the energies right now. So that's why I wanted to chat about that. But um, so what happens is at that choice point, the masculine is required to take courageous action. And that's what starts to flip the script and that courageous action, even if it's just to start to honor yourself and take more time for yourself and go on the walk in the middle of the day, like you've been wanting to do instead of glued to your computer all day or whatever it is, start to br breathe space into spaciousness, right? Spaciousness is a feminine aspect, spaciousness. It's that inner subtle realm you can't see. And when you create space in your external world, that's also a reflection of creating spaciousness inside. And then when you create spaciousness inside to go inward, that's also, you're going to see it reflect in your outer reality because it's a mirror, right? But just, it could be as simple as that to create more spaciousness with your emotions, like get, allowing yourself to feel them more, create more space around them versus just immediately like stuffing them or suppressing them. Like that's a, not going to be a way to fully embody your feminine essence, right? But you can do it in the externalized world too. So that's just an example of like, um, I guess you could say how the feminine and masculine work in tandem when you start to do this embodiment process, right? You're going to see things in the externalized world that will require action. But if you're coming from a place of alignment first with your feminine essence, and this means really, you know, showing up authentically for yourself, committed to showing up authentically, committed to speaking your truth, committed to saying yes when you mean yes, no when you no, mean no, getting connected with your inner value system of what you truly value, um, honoring that and honoring your divine nature and staying, being clear on your values and living in the present, right? Because when we're not in the present, that's usually the mind, which was where we spend most of our time, where most people, 99.9% .9 of the people are in the mind, not the heart space. They're not dropping into their heart space and creating spaciousness within their inner reality they're in their mind trapped in duality again with going from the past or the future which actually doesn't even exist right all we have right here is this experience that's happening right now right now right but the mind will go into the past and worry about recreating something that it doesn't want to happen again or it'll go into the future with some kind of carrot um, that it's dangling in the future that it thinks that it needs and somehow you're going it's going to be better in the future and so most people will spend their time in the analytical mind uh, in the brain um, mental body i guess you could call it instead of really dropping into presence and dropping into their heart space and using and uh, letting the mind dictate their entire day their experience and usually keeps them trapped in some kind of fear or lack especially if you're thinking that something in the future is going to save you or it'll be better in the future the trick or the 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 not the trick the the um it's not a trick it's uh an awareness that everything that's happening right now is exactly what is just happening right now and that's okay. And being able to work with that instead of trying to escape it, instead of trying to find ways to reject it, escape it, or fight against it, because those are all the ego tendencies or numbing out, escaping, numbing, which is numbing out, right? Fighting against it or, um, yeah, what, did it, what was the third one? I just lost it. Escaping, numbing out, fighting against it. Um, justifying it, 
like there's so many justification excuses that come up when you're working through this process, but this is um, the opposite of actually being okay with what is, right? So escaping, rejecting, oh, fighting against it. That was the other one, fighting against it. So you're fighting against the present moment. You're trying to escape or numb out to the present moment, right? Um, and then on top of that, we're usually judging the present moment, which is another form of just layering ego on top of ego, judging it, right? So all of that to say that we are not present with actually with what is, and that's a huge piece of the feminine essence because that's actually all there is. Even if you're remembering something from the past, you're doing it right now in the present. Even if you're thinking about something in the future, you're doing it right now in the present. But we, if we live in the mind trapped in duality, going back into past and future, then what we are doing is we're not living in the present moment. And one of the best little um, things I like to do to bring myself into really dropped into my feminine essence is going through a walk, for example, with my dogs and being present with what's arising, whether that be an emotion or a thought or the flowers on the trees or the bee that's landed on the flower, like everything is being taken in. I'm, and if I happen to get caught in the mind duality, past and future, beginning to recognize that so I can come uh, and live with more presence. And that's a huge part of the feminine essence is presence. So I just rambled quite a bit and shared quite a bit. And um, I just love to know if anybody has any questions or comments, because we're getting close to the end of this hour. And I wanted to see if there's any questions. And I know if you have them in the chat box, you can put them in the chat boxes. I know you may want to stay um, anonymous. That's totally fine. And let me see. So you're about remembering who we really are and how truly abundant we already are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it totally is. And it's not. Um, and so, so, so part of this, let's go through a little, like, you can sort of do a little test if or this is a little, oh, here's a question. Let's see. Yeah, my dogs are such great teachers to me because when I go on a walk and they're like noisemakers and they're like the ones that really um, like to like bark at other dogs and this and that. And I recognize my need to try to even control their unique expression as I go for a walk as if like they were born as a dog so that I could control them and get them to com come, you know, and get them to conform to a certain way of being so that they can fit into the mold of what dogs are supposed to be like when they go for a walk. So everybody else doesn't get upset with me or I, you know, this or that. And um, literally like, there's just so much that you're trying to fit into a box instead of being present with what is and allowing it to flow, being pe present with my pain, being present with my grief, being present with my emotions that come up instead of suppressing them like I did for decades is a huge game changer, right? Because often, here's the kicker. This is really about creating a soul aligned lifestyle that's, you know, the, the yin and the yang of, of success. But part of that is just like there's a uh, feminine and masculine and there's a, uh, those are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other, just like a front and a back, a left and a right, good and bad, right? Well, you also, you can't have the sunshine without the rain and you can't have the success without the failure. Even part of my entrepreneurial journey, recognizing that failure is actually part of success. And so part of the, part of the suffering, because pain is something that is experienced as part of being, it's just part of a human experience, but the suffering comes in when we need to cling so much to what we think is the good and then try to run so hard from what and avoid what we think is the quote unquote bad. And when I was, as, as I moved through this place more of equanimity where I'm able to be present with all it is and recognize, nice, recognizing that it's all life expressing and that I don't have to cling to one thing or run away from something else because that's just gonna keep me going back like a yo-yo on a hamster wheel of this game of duality, which we do live in duality. So they're there and they're present and they're always going to be present. I'm never going to be able to experience success without failures. 
life will show us this over and over and over again and actually beat our beat us over the head with it until we can actually recognize that oh wait a second this is it too this is it too the emotions that i'm feeling are it too and it's okay and i don't have to suppress them anymore i don't have to push them down that's not honoring my true essence because if there's uh, something that's arising like fear or there's something that's arising like anger there's something arising like pain or sorrow or loss Those are not things I have to quote unquote stuff down anymore. Like the typical spiritual community would say, oh, you're not high vibe right now. You're not going to manifest what you want, blah, blah, blah. It actually keeps you stuck in a toxic loop of avoidance of actually what is. And so what I'm suggesting here is to come into a place of acceptance of what is. So you're not resisting what is because the resistance is what causes the suffering. When you can come into acceptance of what is, and stop resisting what is and allowing life to express everything for you and to you and around you and through you. Nothing says you can't have preferences. Nothing says you can't make decisions that empower your life, but doing it from a place of um, only wanting to chase the good and reject the bad will just repeat the cycle and keep it in a state of suffering because we haven't fully embraced life itself we've only really embraced the quote unquote good stuff but if you can't have the good without the bad just like you can't have the feminine without the masculine you can't have the up without the down you can't have the left without the right you can't have one side of the coin without the other side of the coin both sides of the coin are different but they coexist the suffering the mental agony that comes in from the chasing the proverbial carrot which equates to the quote unquote success we're looking for or the love or the abundance or the whatever um, is two sides of the same coin. It's like a pendulum swinging, It's like a pendulum swinging. And so chasing one and avoiding the other is only going to result in more suffering. And that doesn't mean that you can't open up to receive all of the things. That's the beauty of this is because when you actually don't, you may have heard this in some of the spiritual circles or ancient mystics and seers or wherever you, you know, yoga or anything like there's, this is not a new concept when you actually don't need it, quote unquote, need is a really key word because it's the neediness energy. It's not desire in general. That's bad. It's the neediness energy, the clingingness energy that is behind a desire that brings the suffering. So it's not that you can't, experience and have preferences and desire and allow beautiful things to flow into your life. Um, It's just that if you need it to validate you or you're chasing it to validate you, or you are only open to the good side of stuff and you're not able to experience your shadow or the shadow side of things, then you'll just be running from the shadow the entire time. And you'll be chasing what you feel is the good or the success. And the thing about the shadow is, is that it when you shine a light on the shadow with your awareness, the conscious light of awareness, I, I like it like a little flashlight and you shine awareness on it and you allow it to be what it is. Then it's no longer scary and it just becomes something that you're able to integrate. So you're not this fragmented being running around seeking, 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 seeking fragmented, chasing, 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 looking outside of yourself over and over and over and over again until you're completely exhausted or, and then your cycle starts over and all of the things in the reality are reflecting back to you this, the relationship, the career, the job, the situations, the circumstances, all of those things repeat the cycles over and over again, just different places and different faces. When you're able to shine a light on the shadow and let it be what it is without the need to control or change it and just experience it and allow it, then the the suffering will dissipate, right? And you can desire things because they're fun to have or or, or experience. You can have a a life that's rich in experiences. Desire can be there. It's not going to go anywhere. But it's not coming from that neediness place or that quote unquote wounded feminine energy that you might hear some people speak about because that neediness, that wounded 
needy clinginess is what then also makes the masculine energy kick up into overdrive to overcompensate for the void that you're feeling from the feminine essence not being integrated. So if the feminine feels this void, then the masculine is going to kick into overdrive to go protect, to, to, to secure, to get the result, to go do something in externalized world in order to fill that void. But when you feel this from within for yourself, then the masculine energy doesn't have the need to go out and overcompensate and put anything into overdrive to try to compensate for a perceived void that isn't even there. It's just a belief system that it's there. You're, you're this, there's no void. There's no void within. And when that becomes, when that starts to become realized in, in your own experiential work, in your, and you have experiential knowledge of this and you start to like fully come into that ownership, you know, um, worthiness, the masculine energy is still going to go out there and take action and do things and things are going to happen and you still get jobs and raises and relationships and soulmates come in. All these things still happen, but it's now in alignment and reflecting back the inner alignment that it's going on instead of the misalignment that's going on. If that makes sense. So then you become magnetic to what you truly desire on your true, in your true heart of hearts, your true heart of hearts, your intuition and what your, what your true values are. You become magnetic to that because the world has to reflect your inner reality, the inner and the outer as within, so without as above, so below. This is what is meant by that. It's a reflection. And so we're always getting, we're always getting what we're putting out. We're always getting that. We're always getting that in return of what we're, the level of disconnect or the fragmentation that's happening inwardly is going to reflect out and be the level of disconnection and fragmentation that's happening externally. So that was a lot. Um, one of the ways you can sort of tell if you're, I'll just go real quick because I know you, we're a couple minutes over. Um, I always like to give this little test, like just as a gauge, so you can sort of check in um, what lacking integrated feminine or masculine energy might look like. A lot of people think this is all just feminine energy, but it's not. There's a difference. So, so lacking integrated feminine energy, you can sort of put in the chat box on a scale of one to 10, a lacking integrated feminine energy um, could look like or feel or manifest like feeling a constant intensity, like go, 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 constant intensity, always being in stress mode. And so you probably have like nervous system is out of whack or your health or you have health related stress issues going on. There's an, you're unable to just slow down and relax, like um, always finding ways to keep yourself busy when it's finally time to slow down and just be can't do it. You're unable to slow down. So you're always desiring to be busy all the time, overfilling your plate, um, overly controlling um, wearing that busyness as a badge of honor. I can do it all like blah, 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 you know, like wearing that as a badge of honor, feeling guilty when you actually do take time for yourself. Um, and so you're really burned out and you're in hustle mode and feel like you're riding the hamster wheel of life. So this would be like integrated, a lack of integrated feminine energy. If you're in that, you can put like a one to 10 of where you feel like you're at on that scale. And then the lack in the chat box, the lacking integrated masculine energy would look or feel like or manifest as being a yes woman, right? Because remember the masculine is all about boundaries. If you don't have good boundaries, then you're gonna be saying yes to a lot of things you really wanna be saying no to, right? So this is how, this is actually misaligned masculine energy. So looking like a yes, so being a yes woman, lacking boundaries, um, always self-sacrificing, right? So you're over giving instead of giving to others, which is allowing yourself to feel like you're taking advantage of, whether that be in relationships or work environment or wherever it's manifesting, um, allowing yourself to be taken advantage of, not filling up your cup first and um, feeling depleted and overworked and always wearing that happy face. Remember the masculine is externally focused, right? So when you're putting on that fake, you know, a happy face or you're not you're trying to front somehow that's going to be misaligned masculine especially when you obviously you know you're fronting but you're doing it anyways because you need to put that externalized um mask on for others in order to to get through the day kind of thing so did any of those stick out or how would you rate yourself on you know between feminine or masculine on a scale from one to ten 
I'd love to know in the chat box if any of those stuck out. Seven. Seven, battling the move now. And I feel I've come to realize everything you have shared, my trouble in which I believe is being transmuted at this present moment in time is expression. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. So ladies, um, were there any final questions? I know, oh, there's another message. Okay. All right, thank you for joining us. I will send out the replay to everybody that tuned in. And I do have a special announcement that you'll see in the email, I'll say it as well. I do have a program called Embody the Empress, which is a premium um, mentorship program for three months. You actually do get a fourth month if you enroll during the replay of this. But I'm special, I haven't even announced this to anybody yet. I just started to put the link up last night. I'm also offering the Divine Femme, the membership. And the membership is an entry level program that just provides more of like what you experience today, but deeper as far as talking about more embodiment practices and tips and things like that. So it's actually a membership. Um, you can enroll and cancel anytime, at least at the time of this recording. It is brand new and it's being rolled out. Uh, you'll probably receive an email about that here later today or tomorrow. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's going to also focus on the four feminine archetypes um, and work with those seasonally. So it's really fun and interesting. And so if you liked what you had, uh, liked this container and this environment today, that's what that would, it would be more of that um, with a little bit more deeper dive into actual embodiment practices and tips and things like that. So reach out if you have any questions, ladies, and I hope you all have an amazing, beautiful day. Bye.